here we are going to study now one new experiment that is the determination of acceleration due to gravity at this place of observation using a bar pendulum that is a compound pendulum that is the objective of our experiment so that we can get the proper knowledge regarding the experiment here the experiment is determination of acceleration due to gravity that is small g certain terms that comes to our mind that is gravitation then comes gravity then comes acceleration due to gravity it is the force of attraction between any two objects in the universe because we know all the objects attract to each other with a force and that is the gravitation but gravity is the force of attraction of the earth due to the object present near its surface gravity simply it is the force of attraction of the earth on any object lying on it or near it but acceleration due to gravity is the acceleration produced on a body under the force of gravity or the gravitational pull of the earth so the place here takes very important role and we know this g is constant at a place but it varies from place to place so it is a vector quantity whose direction is acting towards the center of the earth and its value near the surface that is 9.8 meter per second square in si system so the value of g as it is varying from place to place but the value of g is independent of the mass size and shape of the body but uh, when place is changed then this value changes at the center g is equal to 0 and on the surface it is maximum so now it, it is very much clear that uh, g is gradually changing from 0 onwards so in this way the value of g is not constant but g will be constant for a particular body at a particular place because the size and shape and mass of the body mass shape and size of the body if changes then g does not change g only is changing with respect to the place where we are finding the value of g then next comes bar pendulum so which is a compound pendulum certain terms now come in this experiment that we have to understand those terms that is one is center of oscillation center or point of oscillation number 2 center of uh, suspension equivalent simple pendulum then radius of gyration denoted by k so here center of suspension means it is a point about which the bar pendulum oscillates along the horizontal axis so this point is uh, present just uh, at any hole of the pendulum along the horizontal axis similarly center of uh, oscillation it is a point at a distance equals to the length of the equivalent simple pendulum is called the center of oscillation so the center of oscillation and center of suspension both are interchangeable that means if center of oscillation is o and center of suspension is s denoted by these two symbols then if they are interchanged then 
there is no change in the time period. That means if the pendulum is suspended at point O, then it is suspended at point S, then for both points time period comes to be equal. That is why center of oscillation and center of suspension are interchangeable. Then comes equivalent simple pendulum. Equivalent simple pendulum is simply a pend simple pendulum whose length is such that its time period is same as that of a compound pendulum. But uh, there are some merits of compound pendulum on this simple pendulum. That is why we are going to study this experiment. We know in simple pendulum, it, the ideal model of simple pendulum, which is very difficult in actual practice, but uh, the compound pendulum can be designed very easily and ask the acceleration due to gravity or time period can be measured very accurately using compound pendulum. That is not possible in case of simple pendulum. That is one of the merit of compound pendulum over simple pendulum. Similarly, the second point is uh, there is a lag of uh, the string and the bob in simple pendulum that does not happen in compound pendulum. Because compound pendulum as a whole it oscillates or vibrates along a vertical plane along any horizontal axis. That is the most important merit point of compound pendulum over simple pendulum. Similarly, in case of simple pendulum, when it oscillates, the time dies out very quickly, which is not possible in case of compound pendulum. Because, because of its uh, moment of inertia and heavy mass of this uh, bar pendulum or compound pendulum, the vibrations or oscillations do not uh, die out quickly. So, these are several merit points of compound pendulum over simple pendulum. That is why we are going to study the bar pendulum to find the acceleration due to gravity very accurately. So, next is radius of gyration. Radius of gyration, that, that term comes in our experiment while performing the experiment. So, to have a better knowledge, we will understand first what is radius of gyration. Radius of gyration of a body about an axis of rotation is simply the radial distance at which the entire mass of the body could be concentrated about that axis. That is the radius of gyration. So, these terms must come in our experiment while studying the experiment. That is why we have to understand these terms first. Then, Next comes that is bar pendulum or compound pendulum. So, what is a compound pendulum? We know there are different pendulums that is simple pendulum, compound pendulum, compound pendulum here bar pendulum, catter's pendulum, then we have listened seconds pendulum, pores pendulum, torsion pendulum, these are different types of pendulums. Compound pendulum is a heavy body, heavy rigid body which is capable of oscillating under the force of gravity or under the gravitational pull of the earth at a vertical plane along the horizontal axis or about any axis of rotation that is that must be horizontal axis. So, it is simply a metallic heavy rigid body suspending from a rigid support under the force of gravity it oscillates or vibrates along a vertical plane along any, any horizontal axis that is called a compound pendulum. So, we will come to the apparatus. So, we will require some apparatus here a bar pendulum number one. Number two, a precision stopwatch that gives uh, 100 second, then two knife edges. So, here we can see this is a bar pendulum. So, it is a bar like structure 
very heavy mass rectangular size of 1 meter length at which the holes are drilled at equal intervals of 5 cm from each other and each hole is of 5 mm diameter. So, in this way along the length of the bar there are 19 holes which are drilled at the centers and all the centers of all the holes lie in a single line which is parallel to the edge of the bar and each hole are each hole is located at 5 cm apart from each other. So, if we go on counting from one extreme end then there must be a central hole that is the tenth hole. So, there are altogether 19 holes along the axis of the bar or along the length of the bar and this is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, this tenth hole is the center of gravity. This position is the center of gravity of the bar pendulum which must not be changed during the experiment. For that there are two knife edges required. So, these are the two knife edges. So, we can see the knife edge one portion is a semicircular and other portion is a flat. These two sides are a flat surface which meet to each other gives us a sharp side of the knife edge. So, this sharp side takes very important role while taking observations. Unless we keep this sharp edge parallel to the horizontal platform over the wall bracket then it will not oscillate properly and it will quickly stop its oscillation. So, in order to maintain the oscillations or to take a desired number of oscillations then we have to keep this half side just parallel to the horizontal axis or parallel to the horizontal platform that is perpendicular to the vertical plane. Unless we keep like this then oscillations will not come properly and it is uh, various, variations of vibrations will stop or the time will die out quickly. That is why this is very important we have to keep in mind surf side takes very important role in the experiment. So, I have already told you that center of gravity which is present at the tenth hole must be maintained throughout the experiment. So, this center of gravity is at the tenth hole. So, for that we have to keep this surf knife edge symmetrically on both sides of the center of gravity. If one knife edge is kept nearest to the extreme end of the bar pendulum, then other knife edge must be placed at the same symmetric hole on the other side of the bar pendulum. This is the first hole nearest to the end of the bar. So, these two knife edges are now kept at their symmetric positions, symmetric holes for which the center of gravity that is constant at the tenth hole. When I change this knife edge to second hole, this knife edge must be shifted to second hole. When knife edge is shifted to third hole, this knife edge must be shifted to third hole. In this way, 
we have to keep the knife edges at their corresponding holes on either side of the center of gravity so that center of gravity which is present at the 10th hole doesn't change. This thing we have to keep in mind while taking observations. Then we require a stopwatch. This is a precision stopwatch which has three buttons. This right bottom, this is the left bottom. When I press this left bottom once, we can see it is running and it shows the values. Now we can see here, this is the midpoint that is to change the mode which we should not touch it while taking observations. And this is the starting point. I will start here by pressing this. Now we can see that it is running and displaying the value up to one hundredth of a second. When I again press it, it will stop. It will show the value, exact value. And when I will come back to zero position, I have to press this left button so that it comes back to zero, zero. Now it comes to zero, zero. So this is start and stop and left side point is to reset and the middle point is to change the mode which we should not touch during the experiment. So this is all about stopwatch and next is a rigid support. We can see this rigid support that I have already told you. This is a rigid support which will be fixed on the wall and these are the two glass pieces which is very much horizontal. With the help of a spirit level, we have to fix the wall bracket on a wall so that this uh, platform must be very much horizontal. Unless it is kept horizontal, then bar pendulum will not oscillate properly. So this is one of the important platform here which you have to keep it properly, otherwise it may give us some error. So as we know, the experiment is conducted when the bar pendulum is made a swing to oscillate. So when it oscillates, that means we are applying some force to it and with, a, with an angular oscillation, it oscillates in SHM. So we have to keep in mind that while taking observations, bar pendulum must oscillate in SHM without any rotational motion. That we have to ensure. Otherwise, it will give us wrong observations and as a result, G comes wrong. So when it is oscillating with some angular oscillation, due to the force applied on it, because of its moment of inertia and mass mg, there is an acceleration produced on the body and that acceleration is proportional to the angular displacement which is acting always towards the mean position of rest that we know at our school level. Acceleration is directly proportional to displacement acting towards the mean position. That we know. So as it oscillates in SHM, so we know that in SHM, the time period of the compound pendulum is 2 pi root over displacement divided by acceleration. So 
we know this time period. Time period is simply the time taken by the body to complete one vibration. One vibration and one oscillation, this is different. One vibration means when it will start its oscillation from the mean position, it will go to one extreme, again comes back to the next extreme, then comes to the mean position. So, this completes a cycle and this is one vibration. But oscillation, the movement of the body from one extreme to other extreme. These are the two extremes E1 and E2. So, oscillation is the to and fro motion or the motion of the body from one extreme to the other extreme. So, it is very much obvious that two oscillations is equal to one vibration. That means, half of the vibration, half of the vibration is one oscillation. So, the time period as we are going to determine in this experiment, that is simply the time taken by the body to complete one vibration. So, this is the value of t equals to 2 pi root over L by g. If we square it and simplify, then we will get g bar is equal to 4 pi square L by t square, which can be obtained from graph. So, this is our working formula in the experiment. Acceleration due to gravity at a particular place of observation is equal to 4 pi square L by T square, where L is the equivalent length of simple pendulum, T is the time period of the pendulum that can be obtained from the graph after we take a set of observations using the bar pendulum. So, we will take this bar and you will suspend it in a horizontal platform over a wall bracket that will be fixed on a wall. Then we will continue taking observations starting from first hole from the extreme end towards the center of gravity. And you will see how it is changing. These holes are drilled, a number of holes are drilled because of to change the distance from the center of gravity to the point of suspension or to the point of oscillation. When distance changes, time period changes. So, we will observe how the time period is changing by taking a number of observations. So, this is a wall bracket that I have already shown to you during its explanation how these uh, horizontal platforms or glass pieces are kept fixed to the wall bracket, so that it will give us a horizontal axis and the knife edge must be kept it with its sharp side in contact with the glass pieces, so that it will oscillate freely without any friction. Otherwise, it will come to rest very quickly. So, that I have already shown you this wall bracket where there are two glass pieces and if I suspend this bar pendulum with its uh, flat surface or circular portion, curvature portion, then it will be a wrong process. So, now this is a wrong process that I am going to show here. So, this is a wrong method because its circular surface is now in contact with the glass places. So, it will come to rest very quickly without oscillating or without taking a desired number of oscillations. It will come to rest very soon. So, this is a wrong process. Number two, if I place this bar pendulum with its flat surface, this is the flat surface. If I keep this flat surface by tightening the screw and it will be placed over the wall bracket, 
on its horizontal platform, then this is also rest. We can see it is not properly along the vertical plane. If it oscillates, it, will, it may give us a rotatory motion along with periodic motion. So now it is, uh, while oscillating, it is tilting because it is not placed properly. Its curvature, the curvature of the knife edge is now in contact with the glass pieces. That is why it is a wrong method to take observations. So the correct way of taking observations is So, this is here the half edge portion which is tightened at the extreme end of the bar that is the last hole which is very close to the end of the bar. This is the hole number 1 we can say and this half portion is now towards the center of gravity and other knife heads is also kept at the same symmetric hole on other side of the bar pendulum and this half side is also facing towards center of gravity. So both those half sides of both knife edges are facing to each other. In this way we have to keep the power pendulum with their proper adjustment of knife edges. Now we can see there are two alpines, one alpine is fixed here at one end of the bar and other alpine with another color of rubber it is uh, attached and fixed at the middle. Why these uh, two different rubbers are given here to fix the alpines only we have to keep in mind that one side is side 1, other side is side 2 because there are two tabulations in our experiment for side 1 and side 2. So to remember the side 1 and side 2, we have given two different color rubbers to fix the alpine at the middle so that we can remember which is side 1, which is side 2 because both the sides are equal. So you have to assume side 1 and side 2 by taking two different color rubbers attaching with an alpine. Now it is suspended at the first hole. Now we can see at the distance between two consecutive holes is 5 cm that I have already told you. So when the bar pendulum is suspended at the first hole, now the distance of center of gravity from the knife edge that is first hole is 45 centimeters because 5 cm from the first hole towards the end is taken out which is not considered but from the point of suspension that is at the first hole to the center of gravity which is at the tenth hole the distance is 45 centimeter. When I suspend the bar pendulum with its knife edge at the second hole, 5 cm will decrease. So distance will be 40 cm. So in this way 45, 40, 35, 30, then 25, 20, 15, 10 and ninth hole is 5. So we will go taking observations up to the ninth hole. And when the bar pendulum is suspended at the 10th hole, that is at the center of gravity, that L becomes 0, that is why time period becomes infinity. We have seen um, in our working formula, there is a term small l in denominator that uh, L becomes 0 now when it is suspended at the center of gravity, so time period becomes infinity. So we are not going to take at the 10th hole we will proceed from first hole from one end to the ninth hole. And we will see how time period is changing when we are changing the distances from the holes to our center of gravity. So let us continue by making the bar pendulum a swing from its 
mean position. So before that, I would like to tell you the lines drawn on the wall. There are three lines drawn. These three lines are drawn here, two cm apart from the middle line. So middle line is assumed to be the mean position. And from the mean position, that is the central line, two cm apart from each other, there are two other lines which are assumed as the extreme lines. So within these two extreme lines, this pendulum must oscillate so that our amplitude of oscillation will be satisfied because oscillation must be very much small while taking observations and this oscillation will be within 4 degree. It may go up to 7, 8 or 10 degree maximum but uh, we will try within 4 degree it must oscillate otherwise this formula will not hold good and g will be coming wrong. So that is why these three lines are drawn and this alpine we have to focus, this alpine will go to one extreme and comes back to the next extreme and passes the mean position. So for one vibration we have to take, then after we will find the time period. So we will focus the alpine here. Now this alpine is exactly coinciding. Let it be at rest without any swing and I will make the pendulum swing between two extremes by pushing or pulling a little without giving any rotational motion. So first I will take the bar pendulum to one extreme with its alpine and I will release and I will see whether it is oscillating properly in between the two extreme lines or not. Then after I will start taking observations. So before we start taking observations, we must be ensure that uh, pendulum must be oscillating in between these two extreme lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 16.16. It is oscillating now and let us take for the second time, two, three times we have to take to get to the very accurate value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 15.91. I will invert the bar pendulum and I will place the other side, that is side 2. One, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is 16.25. We will continue 2, 3 times to get an average value. It is now reset with 0. Let us start from this extreme. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 15.97. So in this way two times we will take on both sides and we will fill up both tables simultaneously. Then we will go to the second hole by shifting the knife edge. Now the distance is 40 cm from the point of suspension to the center of gravity. Now let it be oscillated by 
making it a swing. So now it is oscillating properly. This is 15.78. So here previously it was 16.16 uh, .16 and 15.91. Now it decreases and it gives 15.78. So to be more accurate, we have to take two, three times. Let it be reset with 0, 0 and start. This is 15.75. So it was 15.78 when we have taken initially, then it gives 15.75. So the difference in between two, three observations will be just uh, 5 to 10 milliseconds. So in this way, it will oscillate. Unless we stop it, it will not be stopped. And after few times only, it will be stopped. So we will take two, three times. Then just invert it. And we will go to the other side by taking side 2. Now the stopwatch is reset with 0. Again, I will start. So 15.68, previously it was 15.678, now it is 15.68. Let us repeat for the second time by resetting with 00, zero. this is 15.50. So in this way we will proceed from first hole towards the center of gravity that is up to the ninth hole. And we will see how it is changing when distance is changing. And when it will be very close to that center of gravity, that means ninth hole, then it will be maximum because at the center of gravity it will be infinity. That is why towards the center of gravity, the time period will be maximum. So, there are certain holes on either side of the center of gravity where the time period on these holes are almost the same. So that is point of oscillation and point of suspensor are interchangeable that I have already told you. Because time period on these holes on either, either side of the center of gravity becomes equal. There are two holes on either side of center of gravity. So altogether there are four points along the bar pendulum where the time period becomes same. That we will verify. So in this way we will proceed and let us find the value of time for the ninth hole. So now we can see that it is oscillating properly. Let us start from one extreme. So we can see this is 26.63 by resetting it 0, 0. Start. So previously it was 26.63. Now it gives 26.72. Let us go to the other side by inverting the bar pendulum start. So this is 26.19. Now let us repeat by resetting it with 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 26.00. So we can see that this time is maximum when it is suspended at the ninth hole that is 5 cm distance from center of gravity. So in this way we will proceed from first hole to ninth hole simultaneously 
on both sides so that time can be minimized because you are taking some time in adjusting these knife edges are their corresponding holes that is why we should not take all readings on one side then after on the other side we have to take simultaneously on both sides by keeping the knife edges at their respective holes so that it will be more quicker so while taking observations we have to keep in mind that the oscillation must not exceed 4 degree of arc 4 degree of curvature that means amplitude must be within 4 degree that is why in between these two extremes it must oscillate number 2 the knife edges must be tightened very perfectly with its sharp side in contact with the glass pieces otherwise it will come to rest very soon so while taking observations we have to be careful regarding these two points and both the knife edges we should not forget to keep at their corresponding holes because we want to keep the center of gravity at the 10th hole if one knife edge at the fifth hole and other knife edge at the seventh hole on the other side of center of gravity then this position of center of gravity which is at the 10th hole will not be fixed it is just shifting but uh, throughout our experiment we have to keep in mind the center of gravity must not be changed so in this way we have to take all observations on both sides for uh, nine holes then we will take all these observations on a table we will enter all the values in a table then we will plot a graph taking the distance from center of gravity along x axis and the time period along y axis what we have taken that is the time for 10 oscillations so we have to find the time period by making a table so in this way if we proceed from first hole from either side towards center of gravity that is up to the ninth hole where distance is 5 cm the order of readings for time period is coming like this so it was for the 45 cm distance 1.604 because we have got like this after finding the mean then we will find the time period so this was the reading when we have taken for two times for 10 oscillations then we will find the mean of these two adding these two then divide it by 2 to get the mean time in second that is why it is written t1 plus t2 by 2 then divide it by 10 because we have taken the time for 10 uh, oscillations so after it it is divided by 10 that gives the time period that is 1.604 when the distance was 45 so in this way if we proceed from 45 towards the ninth hole that is at 5 cm we can see how the time period is gradually changing because the distance is changing from the point of suspension to the center of gravity so gradually you can see that it is gradually decreasing and at certain point it is minimum then it starts its increasing value then it becomes maximum at the ninth hole so this is the minimum value for side 1 and this is the minimum value for side 2 which is at the fifth hole that is when the distance was 25 cm from the center of gravity and point of suspension so this point becomes minimum it is clear that when the point of suspension is taken to the point of oscillation and its reverse we can see the value is very much close to each other the point of suspension and point of oscillation can be interchangeable so the value becomes minimum when the distance is at 
radius of gyration that means the length of the knife heads from the center of gravity that is l when it becomes equal to the radius of gyration then the time period will be minimum at this position so that is why the value is coming very much minimum so in this way for both sides we can see that uh, time period is gradually decreasing from first hole to the fourth hole or at best fifth hole then it's it's um, value starts increasing then it becomes maximum at the ninth hole when the distance is 5 cm from the center of gravity so now we will take these two sides to plot a graph so that we will can find the time l the value of l by t square that we can find which is in the working formula this position your graph starts in the meantime try to finish the table so that we will start again today student try to complete your table for you yes sir do it
हो गया सब लोगों का यस सर कबूल खत्म यस सर Can we start now? Or we will wait exactly at four five. We will start. meter from the center of gravity so now we will take these two sides to plot a graph so that we can find the time l the value of l by t square that we can find which is in the working formula so the entire graph paper entire graph paper we have to take we have to use just at, exactly at the middle of the graph paper we will draw a vertical line then extreme bottom of the graph paper we can leave one big box from the bottom then we will draw a horizontal line parallel to x axis so this is x axis and this is the origin that is center of gravity so 
this is y axis where time period is taken that is capital t in second and along x axis that is position of holes from cg or we can say the distance from cg so we can take along x axis one big box that is 5 cm then 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 and 45 similarly negative side of x axis that is 5 then 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 and 45 this is in centimeter 5 cm 10 cm like this because we have taken like this from 5 to 45 or 45 to 5 similarly along y axis so this graph just at the heading the graph paper we will find time period versus distance and at the extreme right top corner we will write the scale clearly we have to mention the scale along x axis and along y axis so you have to write here along x axis one big box or 10 ssd we can write in that way also is equal to 5 cm similarly along one big box is 5 cm means one small box that is one ssd is 0.5 centimeter similarly along y axis we will start the origin not from zero we have to keep in mind we will never start the y coordinate with zero its x coordinate is zero but y coordinate we have to define by considering the set of observations in both tables so we have to find what is the minimum value in both tables the minimum value is 1.518 in side 1 and in side 2 this is 1.525 so 1 1.518 this is the minimum value by considering the both tables so we can start its origin 1.4 or we can take 1.5 let it be 1.4 so origin starts with its y coordinate 1.4 it will be never starting with 0, May zero. zero so start. we have to keep in mind because if we take 0 0 then both the curves symmetric curves will be maybe at the top of the graph paper which is not correct so if i take one big box that is Point 0.1, this is 1.5, this is 1.6, 1.7, because along y axis we are getting more than 25 big blocks and along x axis we are getting more than 20 big blocks. So 25 big boxes are there along y axis, so we have to calibrate it by taking the maximum value along y axis you can see in both tables the maximum value is 2.68 so we have to calibrate y axis up to 2.7 so that all the values from both tables can be plotted easily so 1.5 1.7 like that or we can take 20 big blocks as 0.1 it will be expanded along y axis more accurately 
So we have to write that thing along y axis. If we take one big box is 0.1, then it will be up to 12.7. So 1.7, then 1.8, then 1.9, then 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. And last value is 2.7. So, within that, all the values will come so that it will be easy to plot. So, here we can write one big box is 0.1. One big box is equal to 0.1 second because this is time period in second. That means one small box is equal to 0 0.01 second. So this is the scale we are using while plotting the points. Unless you mention the scale properly, the graph is coming to be incorrect. So now origin is clearly defined with its coordinate. It is not necessary to start origin from 0, 0. So, it is now shifted. We will plot the point and we will encircle it. Then 1.950 that is for 10 cm. I am taking side 1 in the right hand side. So, 1.95. So, here this is 1.9 and this middle one is 1.95. Then 1.673 for 15 cm, so this is 1.6, then 1.67, that is we can take here. So in this way, after we plot all the points on both sides, then with free hand we have to draw it like this it will come then it will be maximum again 44 45 cm 1.604 that is the point here so in this way after we plot the points we will draw a curve like this it will come like this we have to see carefully that the last point suppose here we should not connect the points like this by drawing the curve like this, it will be completely wrong. So we have to think about the last point and accordingly free hand connections will be taken without connecting all the points, it is not necessary to connect all the points, it will be wrong, free hand smooth curves we will find on both sides which are completely parabolic curves. So in this way we will get these two curves and some points will be also deviating from the curve. So after we get these two symmetric curves because the values are very much comparable to each other on both sides of the center of gravity. So, these two symmetric curves we must find. Then after we will use another table to find L by T square. So for that there is another table after we plot all the points. Then carefully we have to draw three horizontal lines parallel to x axis. Suppose this is one line which is parallel to x axis that can be done and we will denote it A, B, C, D. We will connect a line which intersects the two curves on both sides at four points. So these are the four points of intersections and we will find the value of 
capital L that is the length of equivalent simple pendulum from it. Similarly, another line can be drawn, this is suppose line 1, then another line can be drawn parallel to x axis. Suppose this is P, Q, R, S. So these are the four points of intersections and in this way there are three parallel lines can be drawn that is naming differently and from this we will get the third table. So for the third table, so this is the third table and this can be filled up by drawing three different parallel lines or very much horizontal lines which must be parallel to x axis otherwise it will be wrong. Now we can see A, B, C, D, L1 is that is A, C that is L1. From this point to this point we have to measure not using the ruler or our scale, we have to find its value from the axis, from the scale that we have chosen. The value of this, what is the value of this? We can find it A C. Similarly, from B D, we can find if I take the normal to this point and this point, this is B D. So, A C is L1 which is the length of equivalent simple pendulum and B D is L2. Then L equals to L1 plus L2 divided by 2 that is the length of the equivalent simple pendulum which is the average of this 2 L1 and L2. So, we can find it easily. Suppose B D this is 20 and this is 45 let it be. So, it, it will be 65. Similarly, here the value A B that is point A it may be 50 or like this, that then C is 15. So, 50 plus 15. 50 plus 15 that is 65. So, this is 65 let it be and this is 65. It will be coming in seconds in decimals, not in seconds, in decimals exactly we have to find it from the x axis and these are very much equal. So, these are the four points uh, where the time period is coming to be same. So, 65, 65. Similarly, if I take another line that is P, Q, R, S, then P, R is L1 and Q, S is L2. So, this is from the second line, then L will be found out L1 plus L2 divided by 2. So, in this way three parallel lines can be drawn to intersect both the curves at four points, two on either side of the center of gravity. Then after easily we can find the values from the scale that we have chosen not using the ruler and its time period we can see easily suppose this first line it intersects here it may be 1.69 or 68 like that. So, we can find the time period 1.68. Similarly, second line it may be 1.58. So, the point of intersection of the line along the y axis will be found that gives us the value of time period 
Then after easily we can find L by T squared by taking its square, then divide it to find the value of L by T square that comes in cm per second square. So after we find these three values, then add these three and then divide it by three to find the mean value of L by T square. After we put this value, now we can use our working formula 4 pi square g equals to 4 pi square L by T square and after you put it, the value of g of the bar pendulum can be easily found out. So in this way, we will perform the experiment and very carefully you have to plot the graph so that g will come correct. So while performing the experiment, we have to follow certain precautions during the experiment, otherwise it will give us the wrong value. Number one, while oscillating the bar pendulum, we have to be ensure that uh, pendulum must oscillate in SHM without any rotational motion. This is number one. Number two, it must not exceed 4 degree. That means its amplitude will be within 4 degree or less. So that the formula will hold good. Number three, this curvature of this knife heads gives us the error also. If the sharp side of the knife head is not kept in contact with the horizontal wall uh, platform over the wall bracket, then this will be coming to rest very soon so that our desired number of oscillations cannot be taken. Number four, both the knife edges must be kept at their corresponding holes on either side of the center of gravity so that the center of gravity which is at the middle point that is at the 10th hole can be maintained. Number five, while oscillating, the time must be taken using a precision stopwatch very accurately because uh, we have already told that the time starting from one extreme again coming back to the same extreme gives us one vibration. So that can be taken very accurately. Next, uh, while oscillating, we must be careful that there should not be any air current or air resistance. If we switch on fan or any thing giving us some air current, then also this will hamper the number of oscillations and G cannot be coming correct. So there should not be any air current, even if air resistance is present inside the laboratory, still we have to be careful that uh, there should be a finite amplitude. So we should not stop repeatedly the bar pendulum by pushing or pulling it, so that uh, finite amplitude cannot can be maintained. So there should be a finite amplitude even if air resistance decreases the amplitude. So these things we have to keep in mind while performing the experiment. And if we follow these precautions, then we can get the value of G very accurately and within 3 to 4 percent of error. We know that uh, the variations of G at different places indicate the positions of mines and minerals at different locations. So if we find the value of G at different places, then these variations of the value of G will indicate the presence of oil and minerals at different locations. So such type of studies are very much helpful and useful in finding the oil and uh, mineral explorations. Thank you. Excuse me, sir.
Hello. Is it audible, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I got sir. disconnected because of a call. So, any problem? No, sir. No, sir. Sir, percentage error, to sir, likhna hi nahi hai, na, sir. Because that, that. Mr. Sir, percentage error, likha karayi maan hai, likha karayi maan hai. Na, kori maan hai, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, data set me sir, diya hi nahi hai, na. Wo hamara G standard. दिया होता तो हम करते सर डाटा सेट में जी स्टैंडर्ड नहीं लिखा होता हमको जी स्टैंडर्ड 980 होता है भाई सर 980 होता है लेकिन दिया थोड़ी है हमको और ये वाली सर अरे वो जो है नो परसेंटेज है और नो परसेंटेज है ओके सर हां ओके ये व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में कौन इतना क्या-क्या लिखा है सब क्या हुआ तुम लोगों का एक्सट्रीम रहा है एक्सट्रीम लेफ्ट वाले पॉइंट्स के बीच के लाइन पहली परला ये क्या लिखे हो इधर जो पूछना है पूछो हाउ टू मेक दी परला लाइंस क्या ग्रुप में लिख रहे हो वो L1 L2 लाइन कैसे लेना है 
ah, ¿vos escuchó? उसको ग्रुप से लिखने में क्या फायदा कुछ मिलेगा ज्यादा सब पूछने वाले थे तभी मीटिंग डिस्कनेक्ट हो गया सॉरी ओके Yes, okay, this is uh, one submission of a student who has already completed and submitted and got good marks. Now I am telling about the graph to remove all confusions. That is, you see the tables. Which is given, and you might have calculated all the things. Time for one oscillation for both the tables, table one and table two, side one and side two. So these are the things. These are the results coming. Time for one oscillation. Last column you see. In both tables, you see the minimum value. 1.526 here and here the minimum value 1.517 in both the tables minimum value is 1.517 and maximum value in both tables that is 2.72 because this is 2.720 and this is 2.641 so 2.72 is the maximum value so considering these two Value a minimum and maximum for the time period which is to be taken along y axis. You have to think about your scale. You see how nicely I chosen the scale so that the whole graph paper is considered. He has considered that means the entire graph paper he has taken into account. So if you squeeze your graph paper, then everything will be wrong. Whole graph paper try to use. So sir, sir, here wait one minute. Uh, that L one and L two. Uh, Can you please wait? Back. Scroll down, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. You see, this is the um, graph E versus L graph. K is clearly mentioned at the right top corner. Origin is mentioned here. And both the axes named properly, and very nice graph coming. You see the scale graph. Before you come to the third table, your graph must be 
first uh, drawn using the whole paper, more than 90% of the drawn. That is the number one. Number two, both the axes should be clearly mentioned. Number three, origin should not be zero zero. Should not be zero zero. If you take zero zero, then maybe at the top or at the middle of the graph paper it may fall. Those, those two symmetry calls. So try to take the origin for y coordinate either 1.4 or 1.5. But uh, according to the data given to this student, you see the minimum value is 1.517 in both tables. That is why he has taken 1.5 at the origin. And you see two big boxes. He has chosen 2 cm or 0.1 second along y axis. So that entire graph paper is covered. 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, maximum value is 2.7 because in the table, both the tables, maximum value is 2.72. So you see. This is last 2.7 and this is the point 2.72. That is why he has uh, taken 2 centimeter, that means 20 SSD is equal to 0 0.1 second along y axis. Now, after uh, all the points plotted properly, you may have to leave few points, one or two points. You see, all the points are not connected few points here left, you see right hand side for one distance 40, the point is not touching the curve. It is taken just by the side of that point. And similarly, left hand side has taken this 45 years left. But beyond 45, don't draw the curve. That is the maximum value. 45, that is the maximum value don't extend the curve more than 45 and don't draw any line more than 45. That will be wrong. So you see how to find L1 and L2, which is in the third table. Maximum students are asking this. So just you see here, J, K, L, M, J, K, M, N, Suppose this is line 1. There are 3 lines drawn. So J, K, M, N. Is it visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Uh, now you see what is the value of J, M. That is L1. J and M. 4 points of intersection. Actually, there are 5 points of intersection. 2 points on each curve and one point on the y-axis, which is written capital A. So, altogether five points of intersection. So, from point J, you draw a normal. If it is uh, difficult for you to calculate the value of uh, L1, that is JM. JM is L1 and KM is L2. So, how to find this J? Not to measure with your ruler, remember. Not to measure this distance with your ruler. That is the wrong thing. You have to find this value from the axis, x axis. That is why from point J, you can draw a normal, and from point M, draw a normal to x axis. Then find the value where that normal intersects x axis. So, you can tell me what is the value of j from the x-axis because 40 to 45 in between the point j is present. So, how many divisions after 40? Tell me. So, I think it's 43 or 40. Yes, exactly fine because we are calculating in the third table. We are not watching any tables anywhere else. Only you are calculating and uh, giving the marks here, if you exactly it is found or not. J M, what is the value of J M? J, the value of J is how much? After 40, 
that is seven uh, divisions. Seven divisions. Yes, thirty-eight point five. Thirty. Thirty-eight point five. Thirty-eight point five. After forty is present, na? After. So forty-three. Forty-three, sir. I think forty-three. Forty-three point five. Forty-three point five. Okay. It is forty-three because seventh division. Each one SSB along x-axis is 0.5 because 40 to 45 there are 10 SSB, so one SSB is 0.5. So seventh division that means 3.5. 40 plus 3.5 that is 43.5 is the point C. Now what is the value of M in the right hand side? Sir, 22. No. 22 are oh, you Sorry, sir, 18. 19.5. Ah, 6th division, 6th division. So, 18, okay, 6th division after 15. After 15, 6th division, 6th SSB. So, 6 into 0.5, that is 3. So, 15 plus 3, 18. So in the left hand side 43.5 and in the right hand side 18. So what is the addition? Tell me. 43.5 plus 18. How much? That is the value of L1. 43.5 plus 18. So 61.5. 5. So you see. L1 is written 61.5. In the same way, what is the value of L2? That is the value of Kn. K is present where? Exactly in at the middle, 15 and 20. That is 17.5. Okay, na? The value of K. That is 17.5. And similarly, on the right hand side, the value of n, how much? In between 40 and 45, the, um, the position of n. That is second division perhaps. Yes. So, 42.5 and uh, two more divisions, that is 43.5. So 43.5 and this is 17.5. How much? So understood or not? On the right hand side 43.5 and in the left hand side 17.5. So you add them. Sixty-one. Again, 43.5 and 17.5, that is 61, that is the value of L2. You see, the value of L2 is 61. So, L1 and L2 is found, then mean L, that is L1 plus L2 by 2, 61.25. Then what is the value of o corresponding time period? I told you the point of intersection of this line on y axis. You see the point A, what is the position of this A, tell me, because uh, 20 divisions, 20 SSD is point 0.1, two, two small SSD is taken point zero 0.01, so here the value just below 1.6, that is 2 divisions, 2 SSD, just uh, back of 1.6, that is 1.59. 1.59, that is the value of time period along y axis. You see, it is written here 1.59. So, time period is found, capital L is found, then calculate L by T square. That is 24.228. So, in this way, from three lines you draw. The horizontal lines parallel to x axis, and for each line, find the value of L by T square, then find the average that is mean L by T square. 
that is 23.942 that is the value and put it in your working formula that is L by T square, 4 pi square L by T square. This is the value. No matter whatever it is coming, you do it uh, genuinely in your graph that is most important. Whatever uh, mistakes that you are committing in your graph, you are going to lose your mark. Otherwise, no deduction of mark. So, you concentrate on your graph only and uh, genuinely find the value of small g. Whatever you go. Because there is no need of calculating the error, as I already told you. So, do this in this way and submit in time. So, as uh, draft takes some time, that is why half an hour is given extension of time and submit within the schedule time. So, that nobody will be uh, submitting late. That is why half an hour is given more. I think everything is clear now. Any confusion? Sir, I have taken one big box no, in my axis. Is it okay? No, I have to say that. Sir, by axis, I have a big box. Sir, I have to say that. Why axis? Sir, I big box. I have a big box. Eight big box. Are one big box, uh, let me say your graph is covering more than two thirds of the graph. If it doesn't cover, then you are going to lose your marks. Do you understand what I have told? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Your data points should seem scattered over 80% of the graph paper. Okay, sir. 